free fall can only be achieved if there is zero resistance to the motion. In other words, the gravitational potential energy of the building is not available to crush or deform anything. During free fall, all of the gravitational potential energy of the building is being converted into kinetic energy and nothing else. Any breaking, crushing, or pulverizing of the building components is occurring without the assistance of the free falling portion of the building. Any force the top portion of the building might exert on the lower portion would be reflected in a reaction force that would produce an observable slowing of the rate of fall. A reaction force is observable in this graph only in the last seconds when the velocity strays from the straight line. NIST would have us believe that once steel loses some of its strength, it loses all of its strength, and that once the steel weakens to the point where it can no longer hold up the building, it turns to spaghetti or linguine or your favorite pasta. That's wrong. Steel buildings are not held up by steel cables that snap when they are overloaded. A better analogy would be springs, like the springs in your car. Springs compress and give way when overloaded, but they do not lose all their strength merely because we put too much weight on them. The springs in my pickup truck cannot support an elephant, but they would not disappear if an elephant climbed in the back. The only way an object can drop to the ground at free fall acceleration is if all of the gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. If some of the gravitational potential energy is used to do other work, such as crushing steel, then the object cannot drop at free fall acceleration. Controlled demolitions are one way a building can drop at free fall acceleration for a short time. If segments of supporting beams are removed by explosives, then the building will drop at free fall acceleration until the undamaged floors hit the ground. Then the building will no longer accelerate as quickly, or perhaps not at all, because it is doing work crushing the undamaged floors. The NIST simulation shows Building 7 leaning toward the west. In reality, the building remained straight as it fell until it tipped towards the south at the last second. Surprisingly, the simulation ends about two seconds after the northwest corner of the main roof starts to drop. Naturally, one wonders why.
rate of fall of the building is an embarrassment to the official theory. Free fall is a small detail in the whole complex analysis, but it is not a minor issue. Buildings cannot fall at free fall through themselves, because even a weakened building requires energy to break up the pieces, crush the concrete, and push things around. When the falling building pushes things, the fall is not free. The things push back, and the reaction forces will measurably slow the descent of the building. This is why one would reasonably expect crumbling structures to come down in a tumbling, halting, irregular manner. In short, the evidence is clear. We are witnessing not the collapse of a building, but its demolition. And we have received not a report from an independent scientific investigation, but a cover-up by a government agency. It's amazing. A, a amazing, incredible picture word. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down.